Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, it's episode 144, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, we're going to talk about difficult students and, in a way, difficult people that you might run into in your martial arts school, whether you're an instructor or a student. We're going to talk about some ways that you can help make your time and theirs a little more productive. If you're new to the show, my name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host, as well as the founder of Whistlekick Martial Arts Sparring Gear and Apparel. We make some great products for traditional martial artists, and you can check all those out at whistlekick.com. You know, over the years, I've asked for a lot of things from all of you in terms of support, whether that's reviews on iTunes, which we'd still take, or over on Stitcher, there's a few other places. And, you know, we often do a featured product of the day. We're not doing that today. Today, I'm asking you for one thing that will take you one minute. And if you enjoy this show, please take this one minute. Share this show, whether it's this episode or another episode, with a martial artist friend of yours that may not know about it. We're building a great community. Our Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes which is a closed group, but you're welcome to apply to join. Apply. Just ask. We let you in. That group is growing. Our company is growing. Everything about what we do is growing. And that's because of the support from people like you. And as we grow, there's a lot more stuff that we're able to do for the wider martial arts community in terms of sponsorships, new products, bigger guests. It all comes back around. And I promise you that one minute of time that you put in will be far worth it as you look down the road and see the amazing things that we're trying to do to lift up the martial arts realm. But enough of that. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about today's topic. Now, I'm actually going to try something new today. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this ahead of time. Maybe I'm putting too much pressure on myself, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I am doing this episode with no notes, no transcript, and I'm going to attempt to do it all in one take. Now, you may not know that I actually did it, because if I mess it up really bad, I may chop some of it out. But for now, we're just going to roll with it. Difficult students, let's talk about them. Now, if you're a person and you've been alive for more than a few years, you've bumped into somebody in some way that kind of rubbed you the wrong way. And as martial artists, that's going to happen. Now, if you're a student, you don't have to do a whole lot about that. You just kind of make the best of it. You work with them if you're called to, and you go home. But what if you're an instructor? Now, some of you know, we've talked about it on the show before, that I'm actually pretty passionate about teaching. Over the last few years, I've taught everything from CrossFit to martial arts to gymnastics to web design, search engine optimization, and a bunch of other things. I enjoy teaching. But I've experienced some rather difficult students. And the, when I think about the most difficult students I've ever worked with, two that I'm going to refer back to, if not in words, at least in my mind, one of them comes from martial arts. The other comes from a gymnastics program. I, I coordinate a boys gymnastics program at our local gym and really enjoy it. But one of these kids from each, man, drove me nuts. Now, the Interesting thing when you have a difficult student or a difficult person is that those people very often are the ones that need the most help, the most compassion. When you see a kid come into your martial arts school and they're acting out, they're the ones that need what we offer the most. And if you have been around for a little while, you've probably seen this. You've probably seen a kid come in, it's quite often a kid because adults aren't quite as uh, able to adapt and, and grow. Uh, as quickly as kids do. But you see these kids come in, and in six months, 12 months, maybe two years, they've changed. They've become more mature. They have relaxed. They are more respectful. Whatever it is, they are better people because of the structure and the compassion that occurs within martial arts. And it's things like this that, you know, make me so passionate about martial arts instruction and my belief that everyone should train for at least six months throughout their lifetime because of the long-term effects. But how do we do that? How do we take someone that we want to punch in the face 
Sometimes we literally punch them in the face, hopefully not too hard, and help them grow. How do we foster that growth? And there's a lot of things that you can do. The first thing, the the thing that becomes most critical is recognizing that this jerk of a person, be they an adult or a child, needs your compassion. There's something going on or something that happened in their life that is making them act the way they are. And once you recognize that, you can have a little bit of empathy for that situation. It becomes easier to work with some of the challenges that they might have going on. You don't know what's going on in people's lives quite often. One of my my personal philosophies is to strive to treat everyone with the level of compassion I would if I knew that they were contemplating suicide. That doesn't mean you let things go. It doesn't mean you're dismissive of their poor actions or, or speaking out of turn or whatever it might be. But it means that you hold a special place for them and you treat them with the respect that you would if you knew that they were struggling. If you assume everybody is struggling and you give them that compassion, a lot of good can happen. Because let's face it, for the people that are really acting out, they probably don't have anyone that is treating them with that level of compassion in their day-to-day lives. For a lot of kids, they've got their parents, maybe one parent, maybe a couple siblings who, if they're in a difficult household, are being raised by the same difficult parents, maybe a school teacher, maybe multiple school teachers, but knowing a lot of school teachers now, they're overworked, underpaid, stressed, and they're not able to offer that level of compassion. So somebody comes along and suggests, hey, let's get this kid into martial arts because it it would be good for them. You know, maybe, maybe they don't even articulate why. So they come in, they come to your school, and they're kind of thrown to the wolves. They're scared, they're seeking attention, and they're going to do what they've done. The only thing that they know how to get attention with, which is to act out or to be difficult or to just just do something that isn't what you want them to do. There's a lot of ways that you can handle it. And I've seen a lot of different ways of handling it. And I'm the first one to admit, I have not historically been the best at teaching children. I enjoy working with them, but I know people that are far better at working with them. And there's one person in particular that I absolutely adore, especially when it comes to this. He's the best I've ever seen working with kids. And I keep trying to get him on the show. And some of you that know me personally know who I'm talking about, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. Hopefully it will happen yet. We can get some tips from him. So there we go. Step one, compassion. Offer compassion to these students. So after that, what's, what's the next thing? The second thing is to really identify the line of the conduct you're going to hold them to. Sometimes you need to flex a little bit. If you run a really strict class, the temptation is to force that square peg into the round hole. And if the student isn't adhering to the code of conduct that you have in the class, you know, whatever your punishment system may be, you know, and, and you know, stereotypically, it's doing a lot of push-ups. That isn't always the best way. If that child is used to being disciplined, sometimes you're reinforcing bad behavior because in their mind, that may be attention. That's their version of seeking attention because now they're doing push-ups, somebody's counting them or keeping an eye on them. And it really can become a downward spiral. And before you know it, you've at worst disrupted the entire class. You've affected the learning of the rest of the students in a negative way. At best, maybe, depending on how you're looking at it, the student doesn't come back. And that's a missed opportunity to present what they truly need. And as we know from our past conversations, if you're a longtime listener to the show, that person may never try martial arts again because they had a bad experience. And that's not what we're looking for, right? So what do you do? How do you hold them to the high standards that you have, but not disrupt everyone else? You know, how do you find that balance? That's a good word. How do you find the balance for integrating that new student? 
And I think it's a case by case. And I think it's made easier with a lot of things. The first one is having some senior students or some other students that you can have work individually with people, especially newer students. They, they do really well having that one-on-one -on -one time because they can ask questions. They can recognize that they're not going to get lost in the system. I think for a lot of us that have been training for a long time, stepping into a martial arts class, we forget how intimidating that is. And sometimes you get students that come in and, you know, we throw them to the wolves and they do great, but others don't. So if you recognize that you have a difficult student, especially that student needs some one-on-one -on -one time, not forever, but until you give them enough of a foundation, until they have enough context for what's going to happen in classes that they know what's expected of them so that you can give them the opportunity to succeed. Positive reinforcement becomes key, not just in that one-on-one -on -one time, but as you're integrating them, you know, as you bring them into the general class system, don't focus on the negative pieces. It's not all about the ne that negative reinforcement, especially with these students. Quite often, they are experiencing negative reinforcement throughout their day, and a little bit of positive language, positive energy can go a tremendously long way. You know, as I think about the difficult students that I mentioned were in my head. The first one was back when I had my martial arts school for a couple of years. I was just out of college and a local business owner came to me, someone I knew, and they were interested in having their, I think he was 10 year old boy, try classes. We talked about it. We talked about some of the behavioral challenges that he had in school. He was very intelligent, but also incredibly disruptive in his classes. And I believe he had a, um, a pair of educator assigned to him. We agreed, let's give it a shot. We put him into my class and it was very clear that this was not going to work. So I worked with him one-on-one -on, -one on Saturdays. And yeah, there was, it, there was a financial incentive there that parents were, were paying me and you know, it wasn't a ton of money, but I enjoyed doing the work and I enjoyed having that opportunity to work with him one-on-one. -on -one. Now, we didn't get a ton of time. We got about three months before the family ended up moving away. But I believe that had he stuck around, we would have gotten him into a point where he had been confident enough in the way a class operated, in his physical skills, that we would have been able to integrate him into the rest of the classes. That's not necessarily going to work for everyone. But in this case, I have, I'm, I'm, I feel positive about it, right? I, I had high hopes back then and I was kind of bummed out to see him leave. Now, this doesn't mean that negative reinforcement should never be used. The person I alluded to, this absolute master of working with children, especially the difficult ones, is incredibly positive, incredibly supportive, compassionate of the children that come in. I mean, genuinely loves these children. But he will absolutely use negative reinforcement if it's appropriate. And he will almost snap. But he does it in a way that is so full of love that the kids respond. And time and again, parents of these difficult children will come to him and say, you know, thank you. Thank you for re reacting strongly. Thank you for being able to, to take it to that place with my child. So, you know, there may be a circumstance where the kid receives some punishment and then immediately is put right back in. It's positive reinforcement. It's, it's compassion. And the kids do well. There are other things you can do. There are other tips and tricks, but I want to talk more specifically to adults now, because when we think about difficult students, we think mostly about children. And, you know, we, we know that children make up the majority of students in martial arts classes, maybe not in your school, but overall, it seems to be about 60, 65%. There may be some numbers out there. I haven't seen them. This is just based on my traveling around and talking to people. But adults still matter. And when we get adults coming into classes, they're coming in for different reasons. Kids tend to come in for one reason. Their parents want them to. 
I mean, that's almost universally the reason, though the parents may have different reasons why they want them to, you know, maybe we want them to learn discipline, we want them to become more rounded physically, you know, whatever it is. Adults have a variety of reasons. They show up for exercise. They show up for self-defense reasons. They show up because they've had a, a lifelong dream to earn a black belt, you know, whatever it is. They're there. They have their reasons, but they've got a much more complex life outside of martial arts. And that requires a lot more compassion, right? Let's take it back to that. As another human being, it is our opportunity. I don't want to say right. I don't want to say responsibility, but it's an opportunity to get to know someone else. Now, if you see someone that is having a difficult time, because you know what? Adults act out too. Um, I've, I've seen some people do some pretty ridiculous things that makes you take a look at them and say, really, you're, you're how old and you're doing this? There's something going on there. Those people deserve the same level of compassion, the same level of, yeah, love that the kids do. So how do we handle that? We start by getting to know people beyond your name, your rank, the skills that they're good at and not so good at. How's your life? What's going on? Maybe you don't know them well enough to dig, but you got to start somewhere. Maybe you see if they want to grab a beer or a cup of coffee, or maybe you friend them on Facebook and you dig in a little bit, find out what's going on. Once you have some context for what's going on, there's a lot that you can do. People want to feel cared about. And once they do, you can affect some change. I'm not saying you have to be their best friend. I'm not saying you have to devote a lot of time to them. But over my lifetime, I have learned that the people that drive me the most crazy are the people that most need my support, and my compassion. When it comes to disruption in a class, adults are a little bit easier to handle. You can pull them aside or just kind of lean over and whisper to them, hey, you're being a jerk. Stop being a jerk. And if you're a higher ranked student and it's appropriate in your school, take that opportunity. You know, there's something um, that it, where are the words I'm looking for? It's very community building. Oh man, that that just that sounds weird, but I can't think of a better way to put it. If you consider your martial arts school, your martial arts family as a community, there's something really nice about having the um senior students step up and help guide some of the people that might be going astray a little bit before it gets to the point of the instructor having to step in. And that's when you know you're all on the same page. And I know that that's not appropriate in all schools. But for the ones where it is, things just seem to run better and people kind of get it. Instead of that, the head instructor having to, you know, drop the hammer, so to speak, every time. When does it become too much? When do you, I don't want to say stop trying, but I guess that's a good point to, to make or, or a good line in the sand. When do you stop making that effort? For some of you, you never will because you're not going to give up on students until they give up on themselves. And when they give up on themselves, they're they're just going to go, right? And that's great. And that takes a lot of work, takes a lot of self-discipline. And it's something that not everyone has the ability to do. And that's okay. For others, you give a period of time and that may change with different students and different needs. For some people, you know, if a student hasn't integrated well in three months, well, you know, maybe you go to them and say, hey, this might not be the right place for you. You've got to consider a lot of things. You've got to consider their well-being. You've got to consider the well-being of the rest of the students. You've got to consider your well-being. If you have one student in the class that draws 90% of your energy and you become a poorer instructor, or a poor student because of that person's presence, that can only last for so long because if you don't address it, 
If you don't find a way to help lift them up, you may find yourself losing other students. And there are plenty of missed opportunities, right? It's all about your personal value system, what's important to you. But in the end, it all really does come back to that compassion. And you got to be compassionate for yourself too. So what do you think? How did today go? I rambled a little bit, right? I'm not used to going without a script or without an outline, but I can certainly talk and talk and talk. And here we go. This is probably the longest Thursday show that I've done on my own. So, hey, there's a victory for me. What did you think of today's show? How do you handle difficult students? I want you to email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I want you to leave comments at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I want you to hit us up on social media, at Whistlekick on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. We're on YouTube. You can find all the episodes there. If you want to check out the products that we offer, whistlekick.com. See you back here on Monday with another great interview. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your patience as I pushed myself to do something a little bit different, a little bit uncomfortable. Till next time, train hard, smile, have a great day.